It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of April 16th, 2004. Only three movies to look at today, but there's some big ones here, and none bigger than the first movie we have here, and that is, of course, the second part of the fourth film by Quentin Tarantino, and that is Uma Thurman in Kill Bill, Volume 2. people to get to this point. I went on what the movie advertisements refer to as a roaring rampage of revenge. I roared and I rampaged and I got bloody satisfaction. You've got to start becoming afraid of her because she is coming. And when I arrive at my destination, we could have done this in the first movie, but no. This is a this is a movie that had to be split into two parts, um, according to Tarantino. But I'm sorry, the first part still the first part still has the most memorable moments here. The second part, I hate to say it because I do like this movie. But it is a major, major letdown. Uh, you have Uma Thurman once again as the bride who continues her campaign of revenge against the Deadly Viper Assassination Squad, Lucy Liu, Michael Madsen, Daryl Hannah, and Vivica A. Fox, and their leader Bill, Derry Carradine, who tried to kill her and her unborn child. And, like I said before, the first movie had the most memorable moments from this, fr from this, from this story in general, and this is the second film. And you expect the second film to really be the film where we get all the moments that are building up to this big moment where, the, you know, the title happens. You know, this woman's going to go kill Bill. And even when he when she does it, it really is one of the most anticlimactic ways of doing it. And by the end of it, it's just like, you're just like, that's it? You sit, this, this is a four-hour movie that you're... Essentially, a four-hour movie split into two parts. You made people wait six months for an ending like that, and uh, you know, it's just it it's conflicting for me. Like, I like this movie. I mean, I like both the Kill Bill movies, but man, the first film I thought had the best had all the best parts about it. And usually, it's the other way around when it comes to two-part movies. Usually, part one is where it starts off very slow, and then they save all the good stuff for part two. But in this case. Tarantino decides to put all the best stuff in part one, and then part two is pretty much just killing time until we get to the moment where the title happens. And it's just, I don't know. To me, that really hurts the movie in the long run, that we built up this moment. We're waiting for the moment that we're with him. finally going to go kill Bill. And the end result is this really anticlimactic moment that just... It just really does not work in any way, shape, or form. And you just really come out of it going like... Wow. I mean, you built this all, whole thing up for that? I mean, that's... It's a bad movie. It, I take that back. I, I shouldn't have said that. It's not a bad movie. It's just... It's a good movie, but it definitely is the lesser of the two movies. This really could have been trimmed down to one full movie, and you wouldn't have had to... You wouldn't have had a problem with it whatsoever. But because we're splitting it into two parts and waiting six months in between movies, it's just like... Come on, man. It's just like, like you, you had all that time to build this up, and you really, you really had waited to go to that levels to do, to do it like this. And the sad part is, like I said, it's not a bad movie. It's just a film that is just so. All the good stuff was in part one, and you really have to w sit through a lot of filler to get to the to get to the moment you're waiting for here. And when you finally get to that moment. It just unfortunately leads to a very lackluster showing in general. It would be nice to see that whole bloody version which Tarantino has made, and um, unfortunately there's never been a proper Blu-ray release to feature both parts together. And I don't know why he's taken so long to do that. I mean, you know, he said, you know, he had that movie that said he said it was going to be his last movie, and now these things are not doing it. You know, put some time into putting this out there in a. It's like you have an opportunity to put all the is every bit of this mo these two movies together and bring it out to the main public instead of having people having to go to these special screenings to see it. And it's just like, let people see the damn movie. I mean, let people see the whole movie in general. Because I'm probably convinced that the whole movie could probably work on its 
could probably work in general, but it just really does it. It just really ha it's amazing how it's been so long since he's been promising this one cut of this of both parts together, and he's yet to deliver it. And I'm I think honestly that's really a major major unfortunate thing because the way that you have this you have these two parts split up and. Like I said, the first part really is where the best stuff is, the stuff we remember the most. And the second part, well, you should have all everything building up to that moment where the title happens, and it's just so—it's just one of the most anticlimactic things you will ever see in your entire life. And it's just—it's—it's just, it's unfortunate. But like I said, it's not a bad movie. It's just not a good—it's—it's a, it's a good movie, but it really could have been a whole lot better if they had just put more effort into, you know, ramping this up more and build this set moment up and don't go with this anticlimactic route that you do here. I mean, that's just my personal take on it. I mean, I think most people can agree with me that the first part is the best moments in it, but, I don't know, me personally, I thought the second part was not as good. It's still good in general, but it just really let me down that we built up this whole movie to just leave with such an anticlimactic note. Like... I just want to see. Let's, let me see it in two. Let me see the whole movie in one. Because I feel like if I, if you do that, I think that, I think my thoughts on this movie not having as much stuff in there really could really could change around. But then again, who knows if that ever will happen? Quite honestly. So, so yeah, that is Kill Bill Volume Two. So let's go ahead and move on to uh, the next movie, which is The Punisher. We're going to realize here that a much better movie came out a week later that was very similar to this movie where you have, you know, an action thriller about a guy, a desperate alcoholic former CIA operative, U.S. Marine Corps Force Re Reconnaissance Officer turned bodyguard who goes on a pitch rampage after his ch charge, a nine-year-old is abducted in Mexico City. That movie was called Man on Fire. So why am I bringing it up here? Well, let's, let's take a look at the synopsis for this and let me see if you get an idea of what this reminds you of. Special Agent Frank Castle, played by Thomas Jane, had it all. A loving family, a great life, and an adventurous job. But when his life is taken away from him by a ruthless criminal, played by John Travolta and his associates, Frank has become reborn, now serving as judge, jury, and executioner, a new kind of vigilante out to rage a one-man war against those who have done him wrong. And, you know, for the most part, the movie does a good, does follow the main origin story of the character, but... As far as the movie goes, it's a major disappointment, and the biggest problem with the film is the cast of Thomas Jane, who can be a good actor at times, doesn't look or feel like Frank Castle at all, and he overplays this role way too much. John Travolta is such a pointless villain, it's, and he plays it so over the top, like it's on the levels of Turl in Battlefield Earth. That's how bad this is. The script features some really bad bits of dialogue, some of the cheesiest lines you will ever hear in an action movie. Lines that are lines that you've heard done to death in numerous other action movies, and this movie does absolutely nothing different to make those lines work. And, you know, I've said, I brought up Man on Fire for a reason, because we're going to delve more into this next week, well, next time around when we look at that film, but the best movie about The Punisher came out the next week, and it was not The Punisher, it was Man on Fire, which was pretty much a Punisher movie with Denzel Washington playing a character so much like Frank Castle, except for carrying the name of Frank Castle. That's the better Punisher movie. If you want to see a movie that around that time, that's the much better one to watch, but I'm willing to bet that all of us out there have already have seen it. We'll, more, we'll do more into that later on, but I guess if you want to see the better Punisher film with actually The Punisher involved in it, You'd have to wait a couple years for Punisher Warzone, but other than that, though, you just skip out on this movie. It's a really, really bad film in general. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and move on to the last movie here, which is um, Connie and Carla, which is Neo Bardellis as a follow-up to My Big Fat Greek Wedding. And let's see if this has the same kind of success that um, uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding did. Connie and Carla were two small-town girls Jesus. whose dream of stardom had taken them nowhere. Could I get my drink? Oh, sorry. What's your problem? Why can't you just be normal? I only have one life. 
I want it to be a happy one. But they're about to find out how real professionals make a hit. They've seen us. Don't let them get away. Why are you taking all your stuff? We just suddenly realized we have to make a move for our career. Now, they're on the run. We gotta go someplace where they never look for us because there's no musical theater, no dinner theater, no culture at all. Los Angeles. And in search of a place. They sound great. They're lip syncing. Where two wannabe stars can hide out. Are you crazy? We're women. No one needs to know that. And still manage Hi there. to steal the show. I'll be home at last. Is he singing? Nope. This was the beginning of the downfall for Nia Vardalis, who... Actually, you could make the argument that the My Big Fat Greek Life TV series was the beginning of the downfall, because she never had that success that the first My Big Fat Greek wedding had but two years prior to this. And this was one of those films where it's just like, she's never coming back after this. Uh, after accidentally witnessing a mafia hit in the Windy City, gal pals Connie and Carla, played by... Uh, Nia Vardalos and Tony Collette skip town for L.A. where they go way undercover as singers working the city's di dinner theater circuit as drag queens. Now, it's not enough that they become big hits on the scene. Things get extra weird when Connie meets Jeff, a guy she'd like to be a woman with. And so, it's basically a, a lazier version of Victor Victoria, except doesn't have the comedy stylings of Blake Edwards or a great performance by Julie Andrews to save it. Instead, you've got Nia Vardalos and Tony Collette wasting their, their talents on a comedy that's not funny at all. Like, I purposely stopped it at that scene in particular because it's just like, if you even think that this movie has any kind of hope left to it, that that scene right there should just tell you that no, you're not getting you're not getting anything out of this movie. And and it's a re and yeah, this was the bottom. This was the beginning of the downfall for Neo Hard Dallas. I mean, this was a film that she never she never found a way to ca cash in on the my big cash in after my big fact week wedding every single movie she tried to do after this was always a failure she relegated herself to just very few special t uh, appearances in tv shows uh, and then when things get, and then when things went to is couldn't get any couldn't get, when she couldn't find let me rephrase that when she couldn't find success elsewhere that's what i was trying to say when she couldn't find success elsewhere, what did she do? Went back to the thing that made her famous in the first place with pointless sequels to My Big Fat Week Wedding that were nowhere near as successful as the other, as the first movie, but she made them anyway because, hey, she's got to pay for her house somehow. I mean, like, like, I don't even want to say anything bad about her, but I'm sorry. These are the type of movies that make your make you never have a career after is after this. It's just like you're living off of something that you did the first time around and you just cannot you cannot get away from that. And every time and every time you try to do it, you don't nobody wants to go see it because nobody wants to see you in a movie like this. And again, it could work if it was funny. It could work if there was something valuable to it. But this movie is so stupid and so pathetic. Like I said, there have been better drag queen, drag movies that have been much funnier than this, you know. Victor Victoria, Tootsie, Mrs. Doubtfire, Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar, Big Mama's House. I mean, these were movies that are much, much funnier than anything from this pile of garbage. And this is a lazy, lazy put to, lazily put together movie that is not funny, not clever whatsoever. It is stupid. It's ridiculous. It is one of the worst movies I have. It's one of the worst comedies I've ever seen. Just a terrible, terrible movie. What more do I got to say then? It's freaking Connie and Carla. So with that said, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. And as I mentioned before, next week we'll take a look at uh, Denzel Washington and Tony Scott's Man on Fire. We have Jennifer Gardner trying to pull out the top, what Tom Hanks did in Big 16 years prior with, bit, with a th Big in 13 going on 30. And we also have, finally, Clifford's really big movie, which was one of the last, if not the last, performance by John Ritter before he passed away. And, um... Uh, we'll take a look at those three movies next time around. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the place on the next page, check out the previous episode, and also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So, with that said, I'm off, I will see you guys next time, and until then, as always, take care.